Okay, so now that we've created our designs for our beautiful Dicey app and that you're happy with how it looks, the next step is to actually let the code files know about these designs. So as you can see, we're currently in the main.storyboard, which is a design file. And if you actually right click on it and go to open as source code, you can see that this is actually just XML code. So this is called X markup language, and it looks very similar to HTML for those you guys who've dabbled in that. If you've never dabbled in any sort of HTML, CSS or anything, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. I'm just showing it to you to show off how much I know about coding. Just kidding. Um, so the important thing is that whenever you're making designs, um, in the interface build, which is the canvas view. Um, whenever you're changing anything or you're, when you're adding something, Xcode is actually very cleverly writing the, um, the XML uh, code for you. So this makes life a lot easier for us and we don't have to concern ourselves with this at all. But in order for us to write some code that changes the way that the app behaves, we need to let the code files know about the designs, right? So the things that we're gonna change in our app are going to be the dice faces. So we're going to change these images randomly to show different dice faces when we press the roll button. We also need to let the code file know about this roll button so that it knows when it gets pressed and whether if it needs to um, change its appearance. So these are the two cases in which you need to link up design with code. When you want to change the appearance of something or when you want the code file to know when an action has been performed on something. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. First and foremost, we're gonna go into this two little circle icon at the top, and this is the assistant editor. It's really useful because it allows you to split the screen into two, um, and you can see the design file next to the code file. Now I'm working on a 13 inch MacBook Air at the moment, so I'm gonna need a bit more real estate. And some of you guys might be working on even smaller screens if you're using the MacBook or the 11 inch um, Mac Air. So we're just gonna give ourselves a bit more room by getting rid of that utilities pane. And also I'm gonna close the document outline just by clicking on this tiny button here. So now we've got ourselves a bit more space to play with. And I'm gonna show you how to link up the designs with the code. So first we're gonna link up this leftmost uh, image view and I'm gonna hold down the control button on the keyboard and then you're gonna click and drag so that you see this blue line appearing on your uh, view controller file. Now you can drop it pretty much just below the line that says class view controller UI view controller and then it has this little pop-up and it asks you what kind of connection do you wanna make? And we want to just check that the connection type is an outlet and the name that we're gonna give it is gonna be called Dice Image View 1. And the type of the UI element is of course a UI image view. That's the one that we dragged on and that's the one that we're trying to set a connection for. And storage weak. Now don't worry about weak and strong and whatever else for now. So this is something that we'll cover much later on once we've grasped all the fundamentals. So just ignore that for now and just make sure that it says weak. Now I'm just gonna take a moment to quickly point out something. Whenever you see programmers naming their variables or naming anything most of the time, you'll see this type of um, convention. This is called camel case. So the first word has um, begins with a lowercase letter and every subsequent word is capitalized. And this is very common in programming because it allows you to differentiate each of the words quite easily. And it's called camel case because the camel has a lower head than the rest of the humps. Um, or I think that's why it's called camel case. Or it might just be because I have an overactive imagination and there's a complete different reason why camel case is called camel case. But either way, when you're naming your variables, make sure that the first word is not capitalized and every subsequent word is. Okay, so once you've checked and that your little pop-up looks exactly like this, we're just gonna go ahead and click connect. And there you see, Xcode has written a line of code for us. I'm just gonna give it a bit of space so it's always important to try and keep your code as tidy as possible. Um, I'm not a tidy person, but I'm a tidy programmer just because it helps you so much when you're debugging, when you've got thousands and thousands of lines of code 
and everything's all mushed together like spaghetti. It, it's a really tough job. So make life easy for yourself. Give everything a bit of space. Um, okay, so now here we've created an IB outlet, which is what this is called, Interface Builder Outlet, to this particular image. And we've called it Dice Image View 1, and it is of type UI Image View. So the two things to note is the type of connection, IB Outlet, and the name, which is Dice Image View 1. The other things to ignore for now is the week and the exclamation mark. These are things that are a little bit more advanced and we're gonna come back to them once we get to that stage. For now, all we need to know is that we're making a connection between the design file, main.storyboard, and the code file, viewcontroller.swift. And this link or this connection allows us to refer to this design in our code, as we'll see a little bit later on. Now, there's something important that you should notice here, which is this little circle. Because when I roll over, when I hover over this little circle, it actually highlights where the connection is um, going to. So this is really useful. And if that circle is not like this, instead if it's empty, then it means that that connection is not active. So let's go ahead and just connect up the other image view. So again, holding down control, clicking and dragging over to here. If you don't have a wireless mouse and you're working with the trackpad, it is equally simple. Just click and drag. That's all you need to do. You might need to mess around with it for a little bit, but just control, click, drag. And as long as you see this blue line appear, you've hit gold, basically. Now we're gonna slot this just underneath the other IB outlet that we created over here. And again, making sure it's of type, collection type out. It is of connection type outlet. And the name that we're gonna give it is Dice Image View 2. Type UI Image View, Storage, Week, and then we're just gonna go ahead and click Connect. There we go, we've got our two IB outlets set up. Now, the last one that we're gonna set up, the last connection is to the roll button. Now, this one's a little bit different because instead of being an outlet, which if you remember from early on, is something that changes the appearance of a UI element, user interface element, we're gonna create something else that's called an IB action, which allows the code to respond when a user interacts with it. So same, so same as creating the other connections, holding down control, clicking and dragging. But this time we're just gonna put it here, just above the last curly brace, and then we're gonna let go. So we're gonna change this connection type from outlet to action. And then we're gonna give it a name called roll button pressed. And we're gonna change the type from any object to UI button. And the event is touch up inside. Now there's various ways that the user can interact with it. They can most commonly touch up inside. Now this is nothing naughty. I know there's gonna be you guys out there with a terrible mind, but all it means is that the user has touched the roll button inside the boundaries of the button and let go while they were inside the boundaries of it. So that defines a common tap, basically. Now there's other ways that you can interact with that button. For example, um, touch drag outside, which means that you tapped the button, you've dragged your finger outside of the constraints of the button, and then you've let go. So that's defined as a common drag, essentially. Um, but we're gonna keep it as touch up inside and in pretty much 99% of the cases, you will be using this particular event. So you don't even have to change it, it's the default. Okay, so check that we've got an action, we've named it roll button pressed, type we've changed it to UI button, the event is touch up inside, and we're gonna go ahead and click connect. Now, as you can see, this looks different from this. Now, this is an IP outlet, which changes the appearance of the UI element. And this is an IP action that notifies the code when the UI element is interacted with. Now, you can see that the difference between this, 
other than the fact that this is IB Action, this is IB Outlet, are these little curly braces. Now in programming, you have to realize that code gets executed in blocks. So these two curly braces are essentially defining what should happen when the roll button is pressed. This is the start of what will happen and this is the end of what will happen. So you should view all bits of code as blocks of code. This is a block of code, this is a block of code, and this is also a block of code. So say if I wanted to change the dice face, I would put my instructions in between these curly braces. If I were to put my instructions here, for example, outside of this closing brace for this block, then it wouldn't happen in synchrony with this roll button pressed action. Okay, so that was basically us setting up two IB outlets and one IB action. Now you will have noticed that when you try to connect a um, UI image view, when you look at the connection types, it only has an outlet or an outlet collection type. But when you try to link up a button, you've got both the outlet and the action types. Now, why is that? It's because the button is slightly more advanced than the image view. The image view, you can only really change its appearance, but the button, you can actually change both its appearance and as well as notify the code when it gets tapped. So buttons have both actions and outlets and image views have only outlets. And that's something that's quite important to understand. But we're going to be doing this again and again and again. So if this is the first time you're encountering IB Actions, IB Outlets, don't worry if it doesn't all make sense immediately. We're going to let you do this a few times and you're going to eventually understand exactly what it is that it does. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about a really common error that new iOS developers make and it is related to the IB outlet and IB action connections. So it's really important episode to watch because it happens so frequently. We see it in our in-person programming boot camps. 99% of people will make this mistake. So I'll see you in the next lesson and we'll talk about one of the most common errors and how to debug it. All right, see you there.